Yeah, good evening, uh, uh, comrades. Uh, we are here at police service uh, headquarters where we've come to give solidarity to our deputy national uh, 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 information chairperson, Ambassador Emmanuel Mwamba, whom we lent was picked up this afternoon in Woodlands at a car wash beaten, bundled like a common criminal by uh, the Zambia police. As we are here, uh, this is what time? Uh, we arrived here around 18.30. They are not allowing access to anyone to see him, including his lawyers. He's been pleading with the police to allow his lawyers to be part of the interrogation. But so far, nobody has been allowed. As you can see, he's still inside. We don't know where this country is going. Uh, our constitution provides that one should be, you know, uh, have a lawyer to be present when they are being interrogated. Uh, we have Emmanuel Mamba, who was our ambassador mm -hmm. uh, in Ethiopia, ambassador in South Africa, a person of reputable yes. status, being picked like a common criminal. The police have got no regard for anyone whatsoever because they are receiving political instructions. Where is our country going to? This has to stop. This must stop. Uh, I end here for now. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. And, uh, on behalf of uh, members of parliament uh, who have turned out to equally give support mm -hmm. to Comrade Nano Mwamba, uh, we are saddened uh, with this continued police action and uh, police, police brutality. The report that we got was very disturbing, was in the house, uh, that uh, MCC Imano Mwamba was picked up and beaten, you know, at the car wash, bundled into a vehicle like a common criminal, and brought here at the uh, service headquarters. We are obviously here uh, to give him uh, support, and we came here to see him and find out how, you, how, how he's doing. We've not been given access. So two things. Uh, one, a, a continued uh, uh, brutality uh, of suspects. If Comrade Mano Mwamba is a suspect, he still enjoys his rights. Uh, secondly, we're here with his family. The family deserves to know where Mano Mwamba will spend the night tonight. The wife is here uh, carrying his uh, medication. And she wants to pass over the medication to him. So you can imagine that uh, we are back to the colonial times where people will be tortured. The suspects are tortured because our country is sliding in a police state. What is even more disturbing is that the criminals, the real criminals, are still walking the streets. The people that um, took advantage of the 65 million kwacha which was seized by an anti-corruption commission, has to walk in the streets. Government has struggled to try and justify, but we know mm -hmm. that the money never hit control 99. I wish the police could uh, devote that effort to try and arrest those criminals who are walking the streets. Mm -hmm. There are criminals, as we're talking now, who are mining in KCM. And all these criminals are walking freely, whilst mm -hmm. innocent people are being bundled and tortured, you know, like the common criminals. Now, Comrade Kapoya, uh, for us, we were discussing the other day, we saw this coming. Zambians, countrymen and women, we want you to be reminded of one thing. Whenever uh, the UPND government does something wrong, they find the sacrificial lamb. Comrade Imano Mwamba is today a sacrificial lamb so that Zambians can stop talking about the deposit slip that never came to parliament. Zambians should forget about the 65 million that disappeared in some account. So they've picked up Emmanuel the Mwamba. They know that everybody will focus on trying to secure the freedom of our comrade. So this is where we are. Because we, we yeah. 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 Well, well, thank you so much, leader uh, of opposition. Uh, for me, I. I feel very sad today, uh, very sad that uh, 
you know, it is now from 65 million, uh, no deposit slip, but uh, fake papers being laid on the floor of the house. Uh, and I'll come to the issue of those papers being fake, because they are fake. Uh, and, and then the issue of mining in KCM now to Sutra, it will come to 6.1 million uh, billion quarter FIC reports. All of these things are not making sense. Now, the police have a lot of work. They have a lot of work. Uh, we, uh, we were told by the PS uh, in the Ministry of Home Affairs uh, that some of these leakages are actually fake. Now, uh, fake papers, how do they become so important? The papers are fake, isn't it? They are fake, that's what we are saying. Yeah. Well, how have they become so important? The Auditor General's report, we were told, you know, the authenticity of this. The following day, the Auditor General, the auditors who did the work, were being, you know, uh, researched. Laptops taken away. So, it's, how, fake see, how fake are these leakages? That, that is a thing. But the problem is, for me, there is a lot of work for the police. A lot of work, you know, because of the, pov the poverty levels which have escalated, uh, a lot of thefts are going on, uh, people are being beaten. Uh, instead of concentrating on these criminal activities, the, the, the police are concentrating on PF. Listen, PF is not an enemy of the people. PF is just an alternative leadership for the people, isn't it? PF, you can draw a lot of ideas from PF. You can get a lot of ideas from PF because PF was in opposition for how many years? Ten. PF was in government for how many years? Ten. If you are serious, you can draw a lot of lessons from the existence of PF and you can make your governance a little better. Instead of laying fake papers on the floor of the house, instead of just promoting you know, a national division, instead of doing just all these things which are inimical to the nation, you can become a better leadership by you know, providing uh, uh, the necessary leadership as opposed to just uh, looking for PF. PF is not your enemy. Your enemy is poverty. Your enemy is debt, which you claim PF left, but you have borrowed more than you have been able to raise yourselves. You have borrowed more than what you have been able to raise. Okay? So PF will never be your enemy. Your enemy is telling lies everywhere at every opportunity. That is your enemy. Because when you tell lies, people are going to know that you will feel if you lay a deposit, a deposit slip which is not, people will know that it's not a deposit slip. So, you will be okay. If you, if you do these things, even IMF, as you do your restructuring of debt, they are going to say you are credible. You can't be saying you are credible if you have some parliament. Eh? No, we are credible. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, just sorry. before I invite the uh, senior council to Sanka, uh, the issue of human rights, the issue of uh, the rule of law, forms part of a good record for the country. Uh, I think that um, even as we try to try and discuss the the government must do something more. And that something more is to follow the rule of law and respect human rights, because the human rights violations and the torture of members of the public, the torture of suspects that we are seeing, may just affect our good record and in turn affect the negotiations that are ongoing insofar as the destruction is concerned. And the council, you may wish to. Thank you very much, Leader of Opposition. Issues that have to do with the governance of the nation. Uh, frankly, if anybody has had any doubt that this country has now become a police state, what we have been witnessing in the last two weeks, in fact, in the last two months, is testimony to the fact that we are really in a police state. It may not be affecting a lot of Zambians because it appears that the target right now is a patriotic front. But the reality in the spreading of a dictatorship is that once you are finished with one group, 
you've been through for another group that you can yet address. The Catholics. You know, today we are here following up a matter not only of one of Ambassador Emmanuel, we are also following up a matter involving Andy Richard and also Thompson Peary, the young bloggers who were arrested two days ago, who have not been given access to their lawyers and who are still incarcerated. When we came here, we were informed by people that were around when one of them was picked up and people that were also witnessing the time that Mr. Richard and Mr. Peary were being arrested. And uh, it has been confirmed to us that they are still locked up or they are still hold up somewhere within four side quarters. But the police have refused to give us the access to them as uh, their lawyers and also as their comrades from parliament. Uh, Honorable Makebi Zulu was here earlier on before I came and he's been engaging the command, the police command to try and see if they can give him access to these three individuals uh, in order for them to just get information about whether they've been tortured or not. Now, the reason why the police would, re would, re would uh, restrain you from accessing your client is clearly because they have either tortured him or they wouldn't just want him to be able to have legal representation at the time they're interrogating him. Now, if you, if you get into the culture of interrogating citizens in the absence of their lawyers, then you have arrived at the police state. You know, this is not the only case we are following up. There's also a case of Honorable, of, of, sorry, uh, Dr. Zumanizi. He has been incarcerated, he has been moved from one facility to the next without being presented before the court. His lawyers have made an application, you know, to court, and they've asked the court to issue a writ of habeas corpus. Even that matter is being, you know, it's moving at snail's rate. Because now we can even begin to accuse other institutions of being complacent to the degeneration of the rule of law that we're experiencing as a nation. How can you take such a long time to issue a writ of habeas corpus? Usually, ideally, a writ of papers is supposed to be issued within 24 hours to 48 hours. Comrade Zimba has been in custody for the past two weeks. No writ of papers has uh, actually been issued. If you relate also to the case of uh, one of the Nixon Chiram, Secretary General of the, U of the Patriotic Front, you know, he's, he's had to protect himself because if the, if the law cannot protect you, a human being can use the initiative to protect themselves. He has challenged the issue of that warrant of arrest against him, that bench warrant against him, on the basis that he was in the High Court on the day that he was supposed to be in court in Kawambo. Strangely, today the High Court issued a ruling in which it says he doesn't have powers to cancel that bench warrant. You know, we all know that if, a, 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 if one individual is required to appear before two courts, you are mandated to appear before a court which is superior to the other court. On that day, one of the was supposed to appear in two courts. He was supposed to appear in the high court, he was supposed to appear in the subordinate court. You know, he sent word to the subordinate court, including documentary evidence, that he couldn't appear in Kawamba on the same day because he was appearing before the high court in a matter where he was cited for contempt of court. Now, contempt of court are criminal proceedings. And the proceedings that were in the subordinate court in, in Kawamba were also criminal proceedings. So two criminal courts were here in the same individual's cases. He was obliged to appear before the superior court because on that, on that account alone, the, the lower court should have given him an adjournment. Unfortunately, the, 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 the court in, the, in, in Kawamba issued a bench warrant against him. When he challenged it by bringing the case in the high court to challenge the decision of the subordinate court because it is an inferior court, the high court, which is supposed to be a superior court, has decided to you know, wash its hands of offering. Now, if you call that justice, you know, then you have to change the definition of justice because in this case, it is actually a miscarriage of justice instigated by the court structure itself. Now one lives to one. What is going to happen if an individual be required to appear before the subordinate court on the same day as, as, as before the high court? What decision do you make? So it's just created this confusion. We are hopeful that, you know, whatever next steps the lawyers for one of which are going to take, if it is appealing to the court of appeal, we can make an appeal to the court of appeal to just come out and deliver justice in the quality of justice that people expect of an institution like the high court and the court of appeal. We've been practicing law for a long time. You will know that if you explain to the you know, to subordinate court that on the material day you were in the high court, they are, they are mandated not to issue a bench warrant against you. But in this case, because you are dealing with you know, a leader of the opposition in the name of the Secretary General and somebody who's, not, you know, who's, who's, who's actually a member of parliament who you want to humiliate and embarrass, you decide to sidestep the law and focus on ensuring that it gets punished. You know, the reality about the law is that if you don't follow the law, you basically create anarchy. These people that you keep victimizing and vilifying, in fact, using the law 
to vilify them, like what happened to only to, to, to Ambassador Mamba today. It was very unfortunate. On Lucas, who were there, started crying because they saw what he was going through. He was humiliated, he was vilified, he was assaulted by the police who were supposed to protect him. And now we've been here, we spent the last four hours trying to find out if we can have access to him. We are not, we are not even aware what condition he's in. We don't even know now where he is, but as far as we have been informed, including the police officers who have been very cooperative to us, he's actually within this facility here. And we are hopeful that somebody can listen to what we are saying and make a reasonable decision and ensure that we are given access to him to establish his current status. And quite frankly, if anything has happened to him in, the, in terms of torture, he's supposed to be given access, he's supposed to be, to, 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 to be allowed to go and seek medical attention. You can't torture somebody and then confine them somewhere where you, they cannot be accessed by their family. The wife is with us, and also some other friends are with us. We are hopeful that somebody can listen to this and make a decision, allow us to have access to him and talk to our family. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for your position. It's very sad uh, to see what is happening in our country. We want to go to one country which is Zambia, which we should all protect. There could just be one reason why they don't uh, they don't want us to see our government. It's probably solid, and uh, they can't allow us to see him in the state in which he is. Uh, but uh, what we should not forget is uh, this power which we acquire doesn't last forever. So all they are asking from the government is, uh, can we see justice to prevail? He's not a criminal. If anything, hasn't even yet been charged. Why not let him have access to his lawyers so that he can explain exactly what the situation wife. is, and more especially his wife and the family members who are here. We are not asking for much. We just want to see him and, if possible, find out where he is and how he's, he's doing. Uh, it's very sad. And, uh, we, we should not forget to uh, lie to ourselves. This is just political power, which is not going to last forever. Government comes and goes. But if we will be treating ourselves like this, what about uh, if they were to leave power and the, the other government comes in, will they be happy to be treated the way they are treating PF uh, members. I don't think this is the best way where if really we want to create an atmosphere whereby it's one Zambia, one nation. Let us preach what we are talking. Let us practice what we are preaching about as one Zambia, one nation, not whereby we preach something else and then what we are doing is contrary to, 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 to what we are, we are talking about. Thank you. Thank you. So, country men and women, uh, we remain determined and we try and locate where Comrade Mwamba is. You can see members of parliament keep on arriving at uh, force headquarters. We are resolved. We want to make sure that uh, within the course of this evening, we should be able to find Comrade Mwamba and, if possible, find uh, a, a, a medical practitioner who can attend to him. We are all worried in what state uh, he may be in. Uh, going by what we were told by those that uh, witnessed the, the, the brutal arrest. Uh, our National Youth, uh, National Women uh, Chair Lady is here, uh, so she may want to, to say something. Uh, thank you, Leader of Opposition. Actually, this is a very, a very sad uh, moment, especially for us uh, women. I, I could actually see the teary eyes of Mrs. Mwamba the agony that she's going through, just like every other woman, not knowing what has happened to your, to your husband. As I conversed with her, she said her last uh, conversation with her husband was call the lawyer. So you can imagine just the torture of not knowing where your husband is, what has happened to him. Uh, the president himself is a father, he's a husband, and I'm sure he would uh, understand if the first lady were to go through such anguish. He himself on several occasions has given statements that he, he would not want anybody to go through such a kind of uh, uh, tormentation. But this is what is happening. And uh, my appeal, I think, to the general uh, uh, populace out there is that this uh, brutality is real. You know, and the sooner the Zambian people wake up to the reality that we are under capture 
and today it could be one of us here at the police station. Tomorrow it will be somebody else. I think everyone has the right to justice, if not with the members of parliament, but at least if they could allow him to see the wife so that his wife would be able to come the children at home. This is the uncalled for, this is a democratic dispensation. Everyone has the right to be heard, even at whatever level of criminality, everyone has the right to be heard. So I call up uh, upon all women across uh, the country, in all corners. This isn't funny anymore. We have real issues at hand, just the adjournment of parliament. We were given uh, documents that were fake before the house. So these are issues that we should be debating and standing here outside the force headquarters, wondering what has happened to our colleagues. So we appeal, I appeal as a mother, as a wife, as a sister to His Excellency the President, can justice prevail? All those, um, I also want to speak on behalf of my brother Zuman. If there's anything that he has done, take him to court. That is why we have uh, the court. He has been arrested, but take him to court so that justice prevails. If he has done something wrong, let's see uh, uh, the, the courts decide. But holding him like that without giving him an opportunity to be heard is uncalled for. It is fair. And also, where what is very surprising is that where is the international community when all this is happening? Is this is Rwanda. happening. Yes. I was once Minister of Information. I would have European Union. I would have the U.S. government yes. approach where us. They? Where are they? Where is this silence? My appeal is that can we begin to speak on these issues? That is why we need the international community to come in. Please be an independent moderator. This is our appeal. Can you begin to speak for us? Where, where is this silence coming from? I remember when I was Minister of Information, I had the European Union, the US ambassador, all um, ambassadors come to our office. But what is happening today? So please, can we begin to speak, even without the donor community? Where are the Zambians? Where are the Zambians that fought for this multi-party democracy? Where are these Zambians that fought for equality for all Zambians? Can we begin to speak? It is not a matter of being in opposition. It's a matter of justice. It's a matter of every Zambian standing up and speaking for what is right. Today I might not be there. Tomorrow it will be somebody else. But can justice prevail? Can uh, uh, Ambassador uh, Mwamba be given an opportunity to see his lawyer? Be given an opportunity to see his wife. I can imagine just the tormentation that the wife is going through, not knowing where your husband is. There are rumors right now that he has been uh, brutalized. So you can imagine what the wife is going through. So please, whoever is in charge of this mess, can we please have order? Can Honorable Emmanuel Mwamba be given an opportunity to see his lawyer, even in an interrogation? You have the right to remain silent, even when your lawyer is there. But you can imagine he's been, what has happened to this country where people are just abducted and taken to places where uh, people don't know. So please, President Hakainde, can you do what is right before the people? Can you do what you promised that you will do for the people of South Africa? Uh, good evening, comrades. For me, it's a very sad evening, just coming out of Parliament, instead of going home, you hear that, no, uh, Ambassador Mwamba has been, this is what we call abduction. Yes. If your family can't access you, it means that you have been abducted. Whilst us, we are politicians, we can be denied, but what about the wife? What about the children? What about a lawyer? What is happening in this country? I rarely comment on such things. We just need to have order. The Minister of Home Affairs should facilitate that Mrs. Mwamba should be able to see the husband. It's just uh, order that the wife should know where the husband is. She's the next of kin. Before we even look at any other person, mm. allow the woman to access and see the husband. Mm. My appeal to His Excellency, uh, Haka Inde Ichilem, you understand what it is and what Mwamba is going through right now. And you wouldn't want any other person to go through what you went through. 
Honorable Chilangwa. He's not omnipresent to say he can be in two places at the same time. Mm. Only a witch mm. can maybe be found in two places at the same time. You understand to say the lower court is supposed to submit to the higher court. So, but you just want to squeeze him out of parliament and then you say Zambia is a democratic nation. Mm. Where will the pride be? We lost Kabushi because of the same kind of treatment. We lost the quacha because of the same kind of treatment. Mm. Now you are targeting Kawambwa. It is mm. not good. You mm. should allow democracy to, you know, it should be able to flourish. Mm. We can't allow a situation where you squeeze out members of parliament so that the new numbers can grow. Mm. That is not the way democracy works. It's important that we put these things to order. Allow the real rule of law to take place. We can't mm. allow to have a member of parliament a war just because you knew. And the lower court and the higher court, they communicate. They know very well to say Honorable Chilangwa was in a particular court at that time. In addition, Honorable Chilangwa is a man living with disability. If we have any mm. regard for people living with disabilities to be represented in parliament, mm. can't mm. we give him chance so that he can be there to attend to the issues which concern a marginalized population mm. in this mm. country? Mm. It's mm. important that we try, uh, you know, whilst I understand you are in power, it's important that you look at some of the people who are disadvantaged in this nation. I submit. Yes, thank you, thank you. I think uh, just to just to wrap up, uh, the last time this matter came on the floor of the House regarding abduction of members of Parliament, okay. <clears throat> the Honourable Minister of, Foreign, of Home Affairs came up sharply and denied that there is no such <coughs> thing as abduction of members of the public. But there it is. Uh, people who <coughs> reported to us from the car wash told us that uh, Honourable uh, Comrade Emmanuel Mwamba was actually abducted after being brutalized. And yet, Honorable Mwimbu comes to the floor of the house to give an impression that uh, he's running a very professional ministry and everybody's conducting themselves in a professional manner. We want to place it on record this evening that abductions have continued. And the torture of suspects has also continued. Like, like the Honorable Chair Lady put it, we wonder where the international community is. How is it that suddenly they can't see anything wrong? with the new Dawn administration. We were in government before, and we know how many times they wrote articles and made statements about government at that time. What we are seeing now has not been seen in the past 20, 25 years, and yet the cooperating partners, the donor community, is totally quiet. We are now wondering as members of parliament, are we really being served by these friends of ours? Or is it that they may have other interests that we do not know? That's a question that begs. That's a question that only they can answer. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, mm. uh, sorry, Honorable. Is it true that the police are acting on the instruction from Tabo Kawana? Because uh, Tabo Kawana issued the instruction, I think it was it was live on media, when he was addressing the media. And after that instruction, these things are happening now. You see, when, you, when you're dealing with the failed government, uh, the government of cowards, you know, they can act in any way. Uh, even the seniors can obey instructions of the junior because there's no order. Uh, there is total law lawlessness. So I don't be surprised that uh, Kawana now is in charge of issuing instructions. Uh, I mean, Zambians can see uh, we have a minister of uh, uh, local government and housing. The person who is issuing instructions to so the ministry is a, is a minister of uh, is a, the secretary general of the party. I mean, if you want to talk about confusion, we have a minister and uh, local government. But the one who has taken over the ministry, in essence, is the, the, the what do you call the Secretary General of the, of the UPND. So yes, I'm not surprised that now in Stavo Kawana issuing you know, instructions to police to arrest workers of I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, doubt that. Yeah, uh, Honorable, just uh, last one. Uh, according to the something, how authentic is uh, the said uh, letter which uh, they have accused the, the ambassador and uh, these other bloggers to say they secreted. How authentic is it? I think my colleague tackled that. Uh, if they, they attempt as a fake letter, so why is there so panic around fake documents? Why should there be so much panic? Yeah, because I think they are sending a different message back to the church. 
Yeah, they, 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 they say to the church that the documents were fake. And that's the whole country, you know, went back into the documents of fake. But the panic around those documents, they may be constructively authenticating those particular documents out of this panic. We are now becoming suspicious. I think there is some um, a, a, a authentication of those documents, given the action. Why should you brutalize somebody over fake documents? Why should there be so much panic? We have had young men in uh, police custody for a couple of days now. Are you sure that is what you do over fake documents? So maybe we need to start thinking. Yeah. We have to relook really at the contents of those documents because they convinced us the documents were fake. But from their actions, I think they're authenticating those documents. And uh, Zambians may need to read those documents to understand the substantive content of those documents. If you must also not lose sight of the fact that uh, their approach is very directed. These documents have been circulated by a lot of people. In fact, the, the biggest number of people that have those documents are, are UPND cutters. Yeah. It was the first erupted in the UPND probe. Yeah. In fact, some UPND cutters are also push them to the PF probe. And for us, we just thought, look, here is information that is in the public purview. It's not the circulating with everybody. But you've seen what they've done. They've deliberately targeted people that are responsible for keeping patriotic funds in the media alignment. You will see, the Honorable, Honorable Mamba is actually the one who's leading our media team. And you've seen the way he's been working around with the media. Zambians are informed real time what is going on in the country. But this information did not actually come from only Mumba. It came from the blog that belongs to the UPA. It was it actually strayed onto the blogs that are you know that are, that are that are public to everybody else and to you to Patriotic Front itself. But why are they only targeted? These two individuals I mentioned to you, Ivo and Thompson, are actually bloggers for the Patriotic Front. Why are they the only ones who've been arrested? And then why have they pointed to Mamba? And in fact, like a leader of President says, Mamba only became a victim after Tabo Kawana made a declaration that is being looked at. How do you, who don't even belong to the police, how are you the one to break the news that now are going to, to, to arrest a particular individual? Where was the, the police spokesperson? You know? But if you notice, this is a, this is being played like a real life. Because even the police spokesperson issued some statement recently, you know, connected, he connected with the president. And he said he's going, the investment is ongoing and more people are going to be arrested. And those more, the people that say more people are only members of the protective front. Why aren't you arresting everybody else? In fact, the police don't even know where this came from. They even know the individual was responsible for putting it in the Zambian situation. In but that person has been you know, conveniently avoided, and they've gone for people that they know are responsible for putting the image of the patriotic front in the media high enough. And they think we're going to collapse by doing that. We will not. Like I've always been saying all the time, this is not a political party. The PF is a movement. You know, it is owned by Zambians. And Zambians remember very well what the patriotic front has done in this nation. If anybody thinks that by making these maneuvers, they're going to destroy the existence of the patriotic front, they are playing a losing game. The sooner they leave it, the better for themselves. Yeah, so I think the question really is uh, how authentic is our document? Uh, the panic is sending a different signal yeah. to all the Zambians. The Zambians are now taking interest to read those documents and understand the content. Because what it, it appears that there may not be fake documents at all from just the action of the police. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.